consistently attract soulmate clients, begin showing up on brand, monetizing on your calling. Welcome all spiritual coaches, leaders, healers, light workers, and practitioners to a show that turns you on in your business and amplifies your magnetism. I'm host, catalyst, and spiritual business coach, Rosalind Fung, and I'm here to journey with you into the juicy and help you discover where the real gaps are. Ignite your mindset and soul with strategies and systems as each episode takes you to the sweet spots that activates your sogasmic business. Enjoy this light language activation as we begin to magnetize and monetize. Welcome, my loves, to this beautiful podcast. I am so excited that you're here. We have an incredible episode on how to captivate influence, and inspire others with your story. So if you have a life-changing story, you feel called to share. If you're feeling held back to share your story, but you know that people keep telling you to, that you need to share your story, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit more about why your story matters and how your story can help transform others. So If you receive value from this episode, I would love for you, and it would mean so much to me, to shout this podcast out on social media. Uh, And please do tag me on Facebook. It's Rosalind Fung Coaching Bold Sexy Warrior. On Instagram, it's Bold Sexy Warrior. And uh, We would love to have your reviews on Apple iTunes. It absolutely helps get this podcast out so that more beautiful people can tune in too. And if you're a healer, leader, light worker, a practitioner, and you're wanting to learn how to raise your client results so that you can also raise your rates, ditch imposter syndrome, ditch client result anxiety, Be trusted in your market and niche by enhancing your skill sets and learning the tools to get client results. I'd love to invite you to step into my Flourishing Life Coaching Certification Program with me. It is next, it's like next level coaching, evidence, and psychology based on strength based resiliency. And you can connect with me on Instagram and then link in my bios for that, or uh, check the show notes, the link to grab the free mini e-course for Flourishing Framework is in the link so that you can see if this min- this is aligned for you. All right, my loves, I am so excited to be introducing my very special guest today, my friend, Maria Ria. She is the president and founder of Maria Ria LLC, Story Strong Media, and the publisher of Modern Warrior Magazine. Don't you just love the name? Maria is a leadership and self-discovery coach, story strategist, magazine expert, and motivational keynote speaker. Maria encourages her clients to explore a life of inner strength, bravery, and leadership by taking them on a journey of self-discovery and teaches them how to lead through strategic storytelling. Maria teaches how stories, when told right, can captivate, influence, and inspire others. Her program, Women Rocking Stories, teaches four story archetypes every woman needs to create. And we're going to actually dive deeper into this so that you can create abundant success in both your life and business. Maria's vision is to create a community that models integrity, inspires creativity, embraces uniqueness. She believes that together we can create a world where everyone has a sense of purpose, lives their passion, and celebrates by inspiring, empowering others to live their best life. I'm like, yes, I'm having soulgasms just reading that. (laughs) Maria is a Blue Talk speaker 
which is actually where we met was through Business Life Universe. That's what Business uh, Blue Talk stands for at Harvard University. We both spoke there and um, uh, through author and colleague Corey Poirier, who's also been on my podcast. And uh, she's also uh, speaking at multiple women's events and conferences. Maria has also been featured on numerous radio shows, news programs, and podcasts. And now we get to add her to this one. So welcome, Maria. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, I'm so happy you're here too. One of the things that really stands out about you to me is just your beautiful presence, how genuine, how sweet you are, how much you want others to win. And that sense of community you create through your uh, work, through your uh, magazine is really, really apparent to me. So I'm so honored that you're joining us here today. And I know our listeners are going to get so (laughs) much juiciness with understanding the four story archetypes. But before we get into that, I'd love for you to share your story and how you got to be who you are today and do what you do. Oh, I would love to share. And I have to tell you something funny first. This is, uh, this is, this happens to me all the time. And it doesn't matter how many people, how well they know me and have known me for years, that my last name is actually Ray. And everybody oh, calls you know, me I was, Rhea. <laughs> I was totally, as I was like, I forgot to ask you. I'm like, okay, it just looks like Rhea. So we're going to go with that. You know, My what? apologies. Every, people have known me for years and years and years do the same thing. And it was so funny because when I married my husband, I said, I can't be Maria Rhea. <laughs> and he started <laughs> laughing. <laughs> my well, mother amazingly spelt like Rhea. yes yes it's r-e-a right mm-hmm. so and it's Rather funny than R-A-E. my nickname growing up was Rhea. no oh mm-hmm. <laughs> so it just makes me smile every time i love it <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing you can't make that stuff up <laughs> no So um, where to start, where to start? I think where I'm going to start is um, when I uh, was going to college, um, I married. I had um, four babies by the time I was 31. And I actually was a stay-at-home mom for 13 or 14 years. I forget exactly what it is. Um, But loved being a mom. I mean, if somebody were to ask me, what I thought my purpose would be here on earth. Growing up, all I wanted to do was be a mom. It was just so important to me. I don't know, I could have probably had 10 kids. But so it was it was absolutely the the most wonderful thing, but also the hardest job I'd ever done. Mm -hmm. Um, Being a stay at home mom, trust me, if you've never had that is the hardest thing you can do. I um, always many, say that. Yes. For many reasons, right? It's <laughs> yep, it's it's just for many reasons. Well, at the, um at the age of 32, I found myself going through a divorce. So now I'm a single mom with four kids under 10, having to reinvent my life not only as a mother, um now working, but a woman. So it's, um, it was very difficult. It was a very difficult time to try to maneuver and figure out how to financially make it, how to emotionally make it, um, and take care of all the needs of my children as well. Um, my ex um, was fortunately in their life um, and paid his child support. So I, I feel very blessed about that. And I have to tell you that in every situation that I am ever in, and let me tell you, I've been in some situations, <laughs> I always try to find the blessing, even no matter how small it is, just find the mm-hmm. blessing. Because when you can do that, you are able to move forward in a different way. So the blessing of the marriage, of course, would be my children. And the blessing of the divorce would be that it took me on a different path that I would have been on and maybe missed um, where I am today. So there are always blessings in adversity. 
Um, I came across um, in the town that I lived um, a publication and they offered me a job, a magazine, a local magazine. And they offered me a job and I started off in the sales and marketing department um, and within a year became the editor of the magazine. That is where I learned um, and realized the power of story. Um, and what a story can not only do for you, but it does for others in how it helps people. So that's when I truly fell in love with story. You know, I did my sales and marketing and all I did was tell stories about the company, how wonderful it was and how, how much I could benefit their business by being in the magazine and what I could give them and how they could tell their story. So it was all about the story and everything I did. And then when I became the editor, it was choosing the right stories, the most impactful and influential stories to be able to share with my community. So I, that's really truly when I fell in love with it. I loved it. I also, um, there was a time in there, I also worked in radio, which is funny. Because that's, again, stories, right? Mm -hmm. So um, story has been, stories are part of all of our lives. I mean, we talk in story format all the time. Um, whether you want to or not, it's just an eight in us. And we, we talk um, in story format all the time. So it's natural, right? It's the most natural thing to do is to tell your story. So after a while, I remarried and I moved to Michigan and um, worked in radio. When you came to a new community, you have to kind of figure it out and kind of, you know, get your get your grounded feet about you. And um, it was 2006 that I came here. And in 2009, I decided um, well, I was in radio and everything was going online, right? So the economy was crazy. Um, things were happening in the world that were, I mean, very much like today, unfortunately, where you turn on the news and nothing is positive. It's all negative. And I grew up as a very spiritual person. I grew up as Catholic. Um, I tend to be more spiritual. But God has always, always, always been a very important part of my life. So... I don't, you know, whatever people want to call their higher self, their guides, their God, you know, whatever, um, a power higher than yourself has always been um, how I look at things. Um, so when all of this was happening and when the world was going crazy and everything was going online, I did what any sane person would do, right? And I started on the local magazine in print. <laughs> um, for my community, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and I got <laughs> this like a lot of work. Yeah, well, here, here's what happened is that, you know, my, my manager at the radio station at the time got, he's like, Maria, that will never work. It's never going to work. And I thought, well, we'll see. Um, and you know, I had an online component uh, of course, but really literally three magazines folded in this time that I decided to start a magazine. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was odds. a big move, right? It was a big, bold mm -hmm. move. But big, my vision, move. yes, but my vision was that I, people, you know, I knew that people needed to hear stories. They mm -hmm. needed to be empowered. They needed to be inspired. They needed to feel like somebody had their back or to look to it as a best friend. And that's what happened. So Ooh, I just love that. I'm getting tingles just hearing that. Yeah. I want to like really highlight just how I can really feel your why and your desire, your deep, deep desire to be in service overrode yes. everything. And that force is the most important force to activate. Like that's life force energy <laughs> amplified. Yes, it's, it's wow. And when you can do that, when you can be of service and you do it for the right reasons, mm -hmm. I mean, it has to work, right? <laughs> that was mm -hmm. my thought. Mm -hmm. So, pe and people kept saying, Maria, you're crazy. It's not going to work. So this is a really good testament 
to mm -hmm. um, not listening to what others say. Yeah. Because Don't had to I said, yes. Um, in, you know, you ask your close friends in your family who love you most dearly. And they're like, yeah, I don't know that that's going to work for you, right? Maybe you should try something else. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. good thing I'm strong-willed. <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. just saying. So I, um, so I started um, a magazine, gave a lot of thought to it. it. You know, I knew what I was doing. I had already worked in the magazine world. And even if I hadn't, it was a, it was a calling. Yeah, and, clearly. Yeah. So I knew that I needed to be a vessel to help others mm. um, to come Thank out of you. this crazy, crazy thing, you know? So um, as, as spiritual as I am, and I love to talk about that kind of thing always, um, I knew that if I did that um, and, and did a spiritual magazine in 2009, people aren't quite as, they're more advanced today than they used to be. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And I knew that if I did that, I was limiting my audience. Um, so I created a publication for women. And that made sense anyway. It was 90%. Women are 83 to 90% um, the ones that are making the decisions in the world mm -hmm. today anyway. I mean, they're either making them or they're involved in, Right. Yes. Um, making the decisions. So that made sense to me. Okay, so let's make it a women's publication. We'll put really great, crazy stories in it that people will, will be captivated and attracted to. And I do have to mention this was no small feat because I'm talking the Detroit area. And it went over three wow. counties. <laughs> so wow. I was printing 20,000 magazines every single month. Wow. And, you know, had, and it developed into this, um, you know, having a sales team and it was a big, it was a pretty big deal, but people loved it. And I heard all the time how much they loved it, how they wanted, you know, when was the next one going to be out? Um, they're gone at this store. Where can I get it? So I knew that I was doing some good for the community. Um, so in 2000, uh, well, I, I forget, it was about five years later. Um, I mm -hmm. sold the magazine for a profit and I went on to um, coach other people how they could start their own magazine in their local communities. Now, the reason I did that was because go back to the story where I was divorced with four kids, not having a direction in my life, not knowing where to go, being frightened of the future. I knew that there were women out there like that and mm -hmm. they didn't know what to Beautiful. do. How were they going to make mm -hmm. money? Um, and so I thought I could teach them a trade um, in creating this magazine that could help them to make money so much so that it could be an income for them solely an income for them and their family. I so just that's love what your I heart did. so much, Marina. That's <laughs> so powerful. That is so powerful. Thank you so much for sharing your heart, sharing Aww. your journey with us. Wow, I'm so inspired. When we come back, we're going to dive in deeper into the four story archetypes every woman needs to tell. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Om Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Om Times endeavor. Host your show with Om Times Radio Network. Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for inspired conversations with publisher Linda Joy on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests 
openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired Conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. My loves, you know you're here as a soul-led leader to transform this world through the sharing of your passions and gifts. You are here to be in your warrior of light and align your business with your highest self. I'm Rosalind Fong of the show Activate Your Sogasmic Business. Let's elevate your business to the next level expansive level. I invite you to flow into a business soul alignment discovery call with me at rosalindfung.com. That's R-O-S-A-L-Y-N. Fun as in have some fun, F-U-N-G. And let's see how I can best hold space for you to align your highest self, magnetize your dream clients and monetize on your soul mission. I can't wait to connect. Coping 19, brought to you by CDC and the Ad Council. Do you feel like your emotions are all over the place? That's normal during this abnormal time. There are a number of ways to cope. Maintain a healthy routine, get enough sleep, eat nutritious food, and exercise at least 30 minutes each day. Schedule some time to talk with a friend or family member. And remember, you can always take a few deep breaths to feel more centered. Find more self-care and coping tips at coping-19.org. All right. Welcome back, loves. Maria, I'd love for you to share your about your amazing magazine, Modern Warrior. And uh, I know that that will lead us into sharing the four stories, sorry, the four types of uh, archetype stories. Yes, I would love to tell you that. I um this last year, I decided to create another magazine. Um, it's an online magazine currently. Hopefully, um, we'll have it in print next year where we can have it delivered directly to your homes. But it's it's Modern Warrior Magazine, and it's, um, it's to empower women in their lives. So it's fearless, uh, courageous, fearless living. And I have mm. the most amazing authors that write for me. And truly, what this magazine is, is I am a vessel for people to get their message out. Because the more mm-hmm. that we can get their messages out to the world, the better off we'll all be, right? Um, and there's not a lot um, anymore that, there's not a lot of places anymore that you can do that. So I'm happy to do that for people. I love that. And um, when people write for me, this magazine's a little bit different. It is around storytelling um, because we want to be able to tell people um, or to captivate people to come back to the magazine. So they're really good, honest, real, authentic stories that people tell um, with, um, with lessons, like lessons learned or a message to be received, which makes it incredible. So what, um, what I tell people is um, when they're writing for the, you know, just focus on two journeys, on the two journeys, the inner journey and the outer journey. And if we can all do that, um, it works really well. So the outer journey would be what they want you to learn, right? They, um, when you read their article, the inner journey is how you, our readers are feeling as they read the article. Because it's very important. People want to feel like they know the person, like they'd like to get to know the person, or that they, they are, it's relatable in some way. The journey might be relatable. The lesson might be relatable. And if we can all do that, if I can get everybody in the magazine to do that, which they're doing an amazing job, um, mm-hmm. then at the end, they have their bio, and people can... Um, We'll do one. Well, they'll do two things. They'll want to know who the author is um, and possibly look at their services, which is a good thing. And then they'll also go, oh, my gosh, this article was so good. I can't wait to read the next. 
And I feel that we have really created that well with Modern Warrior Magazine um, in getting that done. So the one thing that I would like to um, share is that I have a program, a six-month program, that is Women Rockin' Stories. Um, and I, you know, I, I, it's coming along wonderfully. I love it. And the premise is around four um, story archetypes that I teach. And the first story is your inner story. So your inner story is your story that um, you tell yourself every day. What, what story are you telling yourself? You know, I'm not good enough. I can't do that. Um, I don't have enough money. I'm not, um, I, and I never will. Um, you know, I'm an imposter. That seems to be a story for a lot of business people. Mm -hmm. um, Definitely. You know, stepping into their power, right? You know, I don't really mm -hmm. um, know what I'm doing or that kind of thing. Um, so when um, you tell yourself those things, you believe it. And this inner story really is the core of the beginning of a successful business, a successful life. So we spend a lot of time on um, people's money stories, um, you know, their self-worth stories, um, stories that matter to them that will move them to the next level, right? Uh, Maria, so I that, really love this because it's more than just, you know, the surfacey stuff. It's really like right. you're going deep with people. This is yes. a deep personal transformational program. Yeah, literally reprogram, is. helping people reprogram <laughs> themselves, right? Yes, yeah, self-talk. Yes, that. and self-talk is so big. And once yes, you, is. once you can heal that inside yourself, that becomes a story. And then you can go out on stage, write an article or write your book and tell of that story because it is so relatable. It's really relatable to everyone on some level. And it becomes a great story. And then that inner story is also intertwined with my other three stories because it can't help but be. It's lessons learned, right? Mm-hmm. So um, the probably I work with a lot of people who have money stories. Um, you know, just the energy around money and la lack and limitation. And there's yes. just one thing I want to say to your audience about this. Um, remember that money is an energy. We all are energy. So all money really is, is a piece of paper that we put yes. value to. You know, so... The second we give value to that piece of paper, it suddenly becomes a fear. And we live in fear and la of lack and limitation. So I work with people to repel that so that we can get rid of that quite quickly um, in the hopes to get, at least to get rid of it quite quickly so that we can change our thinking around money and how we see it. Because that... It's not only the success of a business, it's also success in life. Unfortunately, we put that much value on money. Mm -hmm. So, so it's I, a very important one. I was just going to say, I love what you're sharing because it's one of the pillars of my business too, is all about yes. embodying wealth frequency and shifting your money beliefs that are holding you back so that you can really step into your next level. And I love that. We are so aligned with the money as energy. I totally believe that it is all, we're, mm -hmm. I mean, everything is energy. So that's so powerful that you're, you dive into this with your clients um, from the angle of story. Brilliant, Maria. <laughs> yes. Love it. Well, I'll tell you a quick story, just a real quick Please. one. Um, on the self-worth piece. Seems to be my thing for this life. <laughs> Um, but I actually went to codependency treatment. Long story. <laughs> Didn't even know that codependency was a thing. And um, in that therapy that I went to for that, 
um, we were going around a circle and people were talking about their, their story or, you know, of, of what happened to them or what their life was like or something like that. And I remember sitting there thinking, you know what, my mind's so bad. I'm not even going to say it. I'm just, it's not even worth saying it. I'm just going to sit here and be quiet. Well, when it came down to my turn, right, I'm like, I'm good. I'm good. Really, I'm good. You go ahead and go to the next person. And the woman gets up from the circle and she walks over to me and she said, come with me. And she took me to the back of the room where there stood a lone full-size length mirror. And she stood me in front of the mirror. And I have to tell you, I'm 28 years old. And she Mm -hmm. stood me in front of the mirror. And she said to me, Maria, all you have to do is say, I love you to the person in that mirror. And we'll go back and sit down. And I looked in the mirror. And I looked at her. And I looked in the mirror and tears just started streaming down my face. And she said again, Maria, all you have to do is say, I love you to that person in the mirror. And we'll go back and sit down. Mm -hmm. And I fell to my knees and I started crying. I could not even say it. Mm -hmm. Maria, you're not alone in that. There's so many women. I used to be a self-love coach and mirror work is so important. And there's so many women that, or people in general that can't look in the mirror and say, I love you to themselves. Right. Right. So that was such a powerful moment and kind of a life changing moment for me. Um, And so those are all things that we talk about in this inner story. Um, because that, you're right, that does affect everybody. Yes. Um, so thank you for letting me share that. Um, thank you, you for know. sharing. It's very powerful and so deeply important. Yes. Thank you. It was a long, it was a, it was my story for a long time and a very hard one to tell. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and people just, you don't think people want to hear that. You don't think that people want to know that, but pe- it is such a relatable thing. And when you get through it and after you're past it, right, when you do the work and you get past it, it becomes your greatest story or one of them. Yes. So, yeah. So the next story is that I have is a purpose story. And your purpose story in the simplest of terms is your life journey. It allows you to bring to light the most pivotal moments, large or small in your life, the lessons you've learned. And it reinforces the reason why and how you got to where you are today. So that's a great story to be able to share with others um, on a relatable level as well on a stage or in, a, in your book um, and, and how to do that. It's, it's, um, I have in my program, Find, Craft, and Tell Your Story, um, we talk about finding those pivotal moments in your purpose story so that you can pull them out, look at them, maul them around, um, you know, and because a lot of people that I work with say my story is either too big or too small. Um, I don't know how to tell it in a story. I can't tell the whole story. You know, even talks, I have 10 minutes, I have 20 minutes. And, and we pull it apart and we're able to create a captivating story from something that's in one of the pivotal moments of your story. So the journey story is about that. It's about finding um, pivotal moments in your life that will um, make an impact, influence, and empower people in, a, mm. in, in the way that you want them to. So and often we are speaking to former versions of ourselves. Yes. Mm-hmm. So that you can see how that purpose story kind of intersects and interchanges with the inner story. So you can pull those inner story stories into your purpose story. And that's why we begin with the inner story. Thank you for putting all of that together. That is so powerful to see things from that perspective of walking people through their stories. First of all, it's the internal stories we tell our self-talk and as we shift out of that and we move into I like to call it the next level version of ourselves then we have a different way of 
being and thinking and moving and about in the world. And um, I love that, Maria, you've really um, put this together in a way that women can then be empowered to put themselves out in the world to share their journey. Very important story to tell. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Really, yep. It really, really is. Um, the, and I'll tell you just, just quickly, which also goes along, would be the next story, the superpower story. Your superpower story is when you fully realize the potential. And the moment, it's the moment you know you can make something happen in your life. So you can see how these stories go together. You know, the story of your passion and your purpose all rolled into one. It's a great story to share if you're a CEO, a founder, a speaker, a writer, um, or anyone who wants to create change in the world. Mm. I'd love for you to share perhaps like a client success where they shared their story and just how that changed things for them and the impact. I do have... I do have a story that I I would like to share um, just real quickly, and it's short, so I can do it. And it's awesome. Um, it's really the story of Warby Parker because I have to I have to tell you that my daughter. I just found this so, such a good story, um, and these stories you can use as your mission or your vision story as well. But um, mm. my daughter Jenny was buying a pair of glasses, and she um, they talked about about she learned about Warby Parker. And um, she found these glasses, you know, they're fun and they're jazzy and they're inexpensive, right? So she Mm -hmm. found these, she loved them, she ordered them. On the day it arrived, her new glasses, um, they, they, um, she found this branded hanky in the, um, it, uh, to keep, it was like in the, in the thing to keep your glasses clean. It was a hanky in there and it was branded with um, the Warby Parker logo. But rather than just the logo, they told the story. And this is the story that's under 100 words. And the reason I want to tell you this, because this um, is a great mission story. It, it goes like this. Once, a, um, once upon a time, a young man left his glasses on the train. He tried to buy new glasses, but the new glasses were expensive. Why is it so hard to buy stylish glasses without spending a fortune on them, he wondered. He turned to school. He turned. He returned to school and told his friends, "We should start a company to sell amazing glasses for non-insane prices." One said, "We should start shopping for glass for glasses that are fun." Another said, "We should distribute a pair of glasses to someone in need for every pair sold." The third said, "Eureka! Warby Parker was born." Now that- powerful is a powerful, real story and a great example of a story that doesn't have to be huge, long. You know, so you might look at, how do I tell my vision story? How do I tell my purpose story? Well, here you go. Thank you for sharing that. What we'll do yeah. right now is just have the audiences really like digest that. And <laughs> when we come back, we'll continue on with this beautiful, your beautiful teachings. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ohmtimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. If I could be you, and you could be me, 
for just one hour. If you could find a way to get inside each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk, Walk a mile, mile in, in my, my shoes. shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. All right, welcome back, loves. So, Maria, please do let us know about the final archetype that you teach. So, the final story is the value story. And your value story is a story that you share um, about your product or service. It's, it's in a sense, your sales story. Um, oftentimes, you know, it bridges the gaps between you and your potential clients, services, or products. Um, you know, so many times I hear that people don't like sales. I can't do this. I don't like sales. I just can't do it. I, I you know, I, it's, a, it's a block they have. They don't like sales. But when I talk to them about just telling their story and don't think of it as a sale, because obviously if you put it together, mm-hmm. you love it. You love what you're doing. You you know it, you love it, and you want everyone to know about it, right? So that shouldn't be scary to just talk about what you know best. So I, rem- I remember one client went into one of her clients, um, scared to death of sales, told me she couldn't do sales at all. Um, and we talked, you know, I talked her through the value story and what that meant. And we put together, you know, just the story of her, um, what she wanted people to know um, that she was talking to and let the story sell itself, right? You just let it sell this y- itself so that by the end, when you want to ask for the sale, it's pretty much sold. They want it. And she was so funny. She said, um, so this is what she did. She went in and she was talking to this person she didn't know about her, her um, product And she said, listen, I'm just going to be honest here. I have to tell you, I'm scared to death. I'm scared to death of sales because people are never receptive of salespeople. So I just want to put that out there right up front. She started her story that way. And then she went on. I love it. (laughs) And then she went, I I just remember this because I'm like so honest and authentic. (laughs) Yeah. And that's what it means, right? I mean, just put it out there. Hey, I don't like doing this. This is crazy. Call yourself out first. Yeah. Right. Give it less I know I'm no good at this, by the way, she'll say, you know, um, but she's actually amazing at it. It turns out she's Mm. absolutely amazing at it. She tells her story and she tells it about, um, you know, then she talked about her sales or her product. And before she was done, she sold her product. So Mm, it, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be hard. People think it has to be hard, and it doesn't. And so through my program, I have a story, strong storytelling framework that where we put these stories together, and it, um, it helps people to see that it is actually very simple. That is so powerful, Maria. And I always like to say, like, facts tell, stories sell. Mm. Like, even when, like, I'm helping my clients with content marketing, it is really about sharing their story and being bold about it. Um, and the, when it comes to sales, which is, I, I, sure, I'm guessing you would agree, it's under money mindset, but it's a whole different yes. category in itself. And um, the power of telling a story is so deeply important in terms of um, that selling mindset. So I love what you're about. Thank you so much for being you it's, and putting oh, this well. beautiful program out there in the universe. Well, I'm excited about it. I want to help as many people as I possibly can, genuinely from my heart. I want to help It's them. so clear. It is so clear. I mean, you and I have gotten on a couple calls. I met you and it's just so clear mm. that you're very heart driven. Um, Mm -hmm. that's the people I attract. So (laughs) yeah, I think that Um, we all can be successful, right? Every one of us. Thousand percent, thousand Mm -hmm. percent. Um, actually I just, uh, before our call, I didn't tell you this, but I pulled out, 
um, three cards from the Super Attractor deck by Gabrielle Bernstein. And oh, one of them now. says, oh, so good. Uh, mm -hmm. Wanting more for others puts us into the energy of abundance. And absolutely, yes. Maria, you live in this consciousness, this abundance consciousness. So I love oh, it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I um, Absolutely. Yeah. And I do want to just let people know that, you know, modernwarriormagazine.com is the uh, magazine. If they want to go visit there, they can um, find it there. And then um, Maria Ray, R-E-A. <laughs> yeah, we can just spell that. <laughs> That's Maria Ray, R E A dot com. Um, if you go to my website um, and contact me there, I'd be happy to just have a conversation with you um, to see if, you know, it's all about matching, right? You've got, if you want to mm -hmm. learn more about stories, you want to coach with somebody, you too, Rosalind. I mean, you do the same mm -hmm. thing. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's matching people with people, right? And yes. not selling them because that's never That's good. right. Um, and yes. you can contact me on my website if you have a question or you want to talk about something. Just go to MariaRay.com and then um, the contact page. Beautiful. Yes. And before we move into our meditation, Maria, I'd love mm -hmm. for you to share just like what, what do like... I'm sure you have so many stories you could share about your clients, but can you pull up perhaps like two of them that ins will inspire our audience to be like, whoa, this is, this is the thing that's going to make me want to go get out of my own way and show up and share my story. What's the yes. impact? Yes. Um, so one, I'm totally putting you on the spot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But that's okay. <laughs> um, I was talking to one of my clients, and actually it was on the phone. And um, we were talking about, it wasn't, um, it wasn't even a scheduled call. She, um, you know, it was important that I talked to her at the time because she mm. was having a money meltdown um, about making enough money um, for her family. She was divorced. She had, so it was very similar to my situation and very relatable to my situation and um, we talked about um, of the money mindset that she had in that moment and what it, what she was feeling how was it, how was she feeling in her 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 stomach about money and why that was um, why she was having those feelings and I remember just asking her a series of questions about how she felt ab around money, where it came from, what she learned when she was younger. We went through that. And then how we could, we could move it to something positive and kind of check it on the other side. So we did that in, the, in a quick conversation. It was like 15 minutes. And she was um, very nervous about some money coming in that was supposed to be there, and it wasn't. Um, but it was a it was a large amount, and she needed it. And you know that happens to a lot of us. So when when we got off the phone, I had her do a couple of exercises, a little bit of meditation, and it was the next day. She did not text me. She called me to thank me for helping her through that because she truly believed, and that by changing her mindset in allowing the money in that that check would arrive it was very late and it did wow. so that's the power of manifesting things in your life mm -hmm. and wanting something more you know, or, yeah, you know from absolutely. from your whole story but be, being able to change that story and doing that was was just unbelievable for her. I did have another conversation with another client on sales, which was another kind of money story, but it was more a fear based on sales that mm. comes to mind. Um, and I, and I, you know, have a lot of those kind of, um, stories because people really truly are afraid. So we went into the fear and judgment and people judge themselves about how they're feeling about that fear. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Right. So it's kind of a circle. 
So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, when we can get out of our own way and allow things in, and fear really is judgment, judgment of others, judgment of ourselves, judgment of, um, you know, our circumstance, then we are able to allow. So a lot of it, a lot of things that I work with people on is allowing this into their life. Um, and by the way, that particular person was looking at a huge, um, big, big, big company sales that she didn't want to go to, decided that she was not going to do it. She was not going to go to it. She went to it and she got the sale. So this is what happens when we shift ourselves and put in that belief in ourselves with conviction and we step in and claim our full CEO power. Like that is what happens. And that is so so amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations to the both of you because it really is a beautiful co-creation. But yes, it's always about personal and spiritual accountability. So we can't make people do things, but... (laughs) It's right, and, but for I them, think our clients, yeah, yeah, you'll agree. Sorry, with go me. ahead. I think you'll agree with me, Rosalind, that sometimes you just need to hear those things again. So it's yes. the hearing it, and the working yes. it, and knowing that you can do it, and then the seeing that it worked that mm-hmm. really helps people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and being in the vibration of, in your case you know, working with Maria, this client was activated into her next level version. That's the beautiful sacredness mm-hmm. that happens in coaching containers. And I just love listening to these stories of how people really shift. And I know even for myself, it's like I get the biggest orgasms when I see my clients have the whoa, the like mm-hmm. breakthroughs and then they like implement, take action. And then all of a sudden they're manifesting. It's just like, there it is. All I had to do was just like push a little bit of a button, catalyze, and then there we go. <laughs> yes. It is so much fun. It is so much fun. So Mm, thank you yes. so much, Maria. Um, once again, you guys can check out the show notes for links to connect with Maria. If you feel called to work with her, please go to her website, Maria. I was going to say Raya, Maria Ray.com, but it looks like Raya, R E A. Yeah.com. Um, <laughs> and then please do go check out her incredible magazine, Modern Warrior, which I freaking love the the name of that. You absolutely preach, uh, practice what you <laughs> preach about that. You stand for that so Thank much, you. Maria. Beautiful. Thank so what you. we're going to do in these last um, few minutes is just to move into meditation. I'm going to invite you to notice what in this conversation really stood out most for you. And so... As you notice what stood out most for you, feel into the story archetype that you know you need to deepen more into. And so Maria, I'll just ask you to like name those four archetypes again, please. Sure. Your inner story, the purpose story, your superpower story, and your value story. Beautiful. So feeling into which of those resonates most with you to go deeper into. What is your next level version? How is she showing up? What story does she need to tell? Just notice your intuition Feel into it. Don't think your way through this. Just feel into it. Now imagine yourself sharing your story. Whether it's on stage, on a podcast, on video. Imagine yourself inspiring, moving, catalyzing others, activating aligned action in others simply because you are showing up and sharing your story. 
Notice the sensations. Notice how you feel as you envision sharing your story in such a powerful, inspirational, and captivating way. Feel into the ripple effects of your impact in sharing your story. Let yourself be a vessel. Feel beautiful divine light coming through your crown. Connecting and activating each of your chakras. Your third eye, your throat, heart, solar plex, which is your personal life force energy. Mora kora ti ano kora ti a sacral imru to the safer you share your story. Mora kira kora ti a nara kora ti a. Breathing in and out. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you so much, Maria, and to my audience. I certainly hope that this inspires you to go show up. Share your story. Create the impacts you deeply desire.